Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Ed Hempster. Today I'm going to be going over part 4 in the Project AI tutorial series. So in the last one, part 3, we went ahead and we gave our enemy AI some states to move to. So one of those is if we move him all the way over here, then he'll walk towards a player if there's no cover near him, but when cover does arrive, then he'll run to that. We also added a death state and we added some bug fixes which included setting the player's, I think, position uh, only on X and Y and not Z. So if you haven't already watched that tutorial, be sure to check it out so you'll be up to date, but apart from that, I'll get straight on into this tutorial. So in part 3, we did fix some problems with the code which was sort of contradicting itself. However, there was still one problem, sort of see what the problem is. So if you move uh, in this zone here, the AI will sort of move backwards and forwards and sort of switch between the two and won't make a proper decision. So basically the AI will move to this cover point and as it moves away it blocks the ray so it just gets confused, it goes back but it's not actually safe so it tries to move to the next one and keeps going back and forth. So what we need to do is check whether the ray here has actually collided with the player at all. So what we're going to do is select uh, one cover point like so and I'm going to go over here, add myself a ray sensor, invert, and we're going to choose player. This will be the same as the other one, so all the same settings uh, as you can see here, except we're using invert. Now what we want to do is add an and controller, get rid of that, and join that in. Now what we also need to do is go over here, add a property, and this is going to be an interval for the cover property. I'm not sure what this check one's doing, so just cover by itself, uh, interval and cover, then the minimum is zero, so it's safe, and the maximum is two when it's being used. So we want that range to be there as well, so we don't want array, and we also want this to be between that. So now we'll go over here to our scripts and we'll choose set not safe. Then instead of one, I'm going to go and set it to three. Alright, so now what we have to do is do all the other changes for all the other cover points. So an easier way is just to press numpad 7, uh, make sure you've finalized everything. So now what I'm going to do is I guess just delete everything else. So all these ones we don't need and we can just replace them with this one. Okay, like so. Okay, cool. So once you're happy with how all of those are set out, hopefully now that should work. So let's go ahead and try it out. So if we press P, play will go to that one, that one over there, and now you notice uh, he'll move to one without glitching backwards and forwards. So now what we're going to do is get on to adding the actual sort of rig for the AI. So what I'm going to do is go over to layer two here, and then what I'm going to do is press Shift S cursor to center. So down in the description below is a link to a fully rigged, modeled, and animated uh, armature I've made already. So if you want to go ahead and get it, uh, feel free, but otherwise feel free to use your own material. So I'm going to go up here, file, and append. So once you've found the file, uh, just open it up and then go to object, and we want to choose uh, textured rig and textured headshot sensor, the gun that he's using, the gun magazine, and the body shot sensor. Link and append, there we go. So all of these uh, sensors and stuff are just parented to the bones uh, in here, so fairly simple to set up. Basically, if you have a rig, uh, select pose mode, then uh, select the bone you want to parent to, go back to object mode, select the object you want to parent, hold down shift, select the rig, control P, and then parent to the bone that you last had. Then again, uh, when I was making the rig for this, I also made an extra bone for the gun itself, so that if we go into pose mode, we can move it around and animate it properly. Cool, so what we're gonna do is go over here and change it to the dope sheet, and we're gonna move it along, choose action editor, and in here we have all the different actions that we're gonna use. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I guess we can add this to our AI. 
So let's select all of it, press M and move to layer 1. Now let's go over to layer 1 and we need to parent this to our AI cube. So let's select this here, hold down shift, select the cube, control P and parent. So now let's go ahead and move it to the right spot. There we go. And now we'll just make sure it's level, so upwards as well. And if need be, you can scale it down as well. Uh, like so. Maybe numpad 1 to go into front view. And Z to go into wireframe. You can sort of see where the ground would be at. So now we can bring up a new window here, change it to timeline. And you can also see all the animation keyframes. And so I guess the furthest point is there, so we'll just move him up to that. And so now it should look as if he's running. Now what I'm going to do is go and select my AI. And we'll move this across and go over to layer 2 when he's walking to his cover. And then what we'll do is hold down shift, select the rig here. Then on this always sensor here, we want to join this up to walking forward. So let's go down. If we move this up here, uh, forward walking over here. So move that and join that in there. So now he'll be walking forwards when that happens. So fairly self-explanatory. So now we can go ahead and try it out. Alt Z to go into texture mode and press P. Oh, and you'll notice it's sort of glitched out. So the reason for that will be that our sort of enemy textured here is still static. So let's go over here and choose no collision. Then also do the same for the gun and also for the rake if possible, which already should be. Now these two, let's also make ghost uh, just in case they have any other problems. Press P and now you notice that he walks Towards. Now he does stop, so let's go ahead, select this, and put the always on true. So press P, try it out, and now he'll always be walking. So when he's tracking to the nearest point, we want to play the running animation. So let's go ahead and join that in. Let's go to layer 1, and the running animation should be forward run. So this one down here. So let's go ahead and connect this. Uh, down to run. So we might need to press control and up arrow to go into this window, select that and join it in the bottom. Control down arrow. So also what we have to do now is activate it within the find cover script. So let's go over here, change it to text editor and I'll move to the start here, find cover, it's the same one. So in here what we want to do is also import the animation. So I guess run is equal to cont.actuators and then run. And in here what we want to do is go ahead and set the run animation to go. And also make sure that this uh, is a lowercase r because if you notice down the bottom here it's a lowercase r as well. Okay so now if we press B I'll move forward and reaches the cover and he'll run towards it like that. So when a player is at the cover point you'll notice that he keeps on running. So what we need to do is make sure that his state is in the correct state so that he'll keep on running. So to do that what we're going to do is put a if statement in here. So if and we want to check the own state. But let's go ahead and enemy state. So enemy state. So if that is equal to, I think zero was finding cover. So if it's equal to zero, then we want the running animation to play. So do a colon and then tab, uh, let's put else, cnt.deactivate run. And one more thing, uh, this isn't called enemy state, it's enemy status. So make sure you have the correct name. And so now hopefully that should work. So running towards and then stop. Now what we want to do is play a ducking down animation. So to do that, I'm gonna go on my enemy AI here and we'll add our cells. Let's just make it full screen. So minimize that over here, add a property when enemy status is equal to one on tap. So it only plays once. Then we want to go in here and play duck. 
So get rid of that, and there we go. Over now if we press P, run across, and play the duck animation. Cool. So there we go. We have our enemy running, or walking, running, and then ducking behind cover. Okay, so one more thing that we also have to do is you'll notice uh, when you click in here, all of these have zeros beside them, which means that if you close the file, even if you save, uh, the animations won't be saved. So what we need to do is select the rig of the player, uh, select the first one here, choose the F, and just do that for all of them. So now also what we need him to do is uh, track towards the player when he's moving towards him. So in state 2, when he's just idly moving towards the player, or just steering towards him like this, you'll notice he isn't facing in the right direction, at least the rig isn't. So what we're going to do is basically select the rig here, and then we're going to add an edit object, scroll down, and change this to track 2. And we'll choose player and set the time to maybe three. All right, so full screen, control up arrow, and join this one uh, in with that one as well. Cool, so control down arrow, that should be that done. Now, if we try that out, you notice he is tracking to, but in the wrong direction. So to fix that, let's go over to our rig here and scroll down and make sure that the axis here you'll notice it is tracking on this one which is the back so let's change that to a negative there we go cool so he'll track towards the player like so and then when he finds cover he'll just run towards it like that and duck behind cool so there you go guys that's the end of this tutorial hopefully you enjoyed it if you did let me know with a like comment or share down below i did plan on doing a little bit more but i ran into quite a few issues with the animations and stuff that's another annoying thing with the ai uh, that the animations will start glitching out very frequently so anyway hope you enjoyed the tutorial have an awesome week and i'll see you guys in the next video